a little bit of the history of how we got to where we're at today. So I came on board in this position a little over three years ago, and I attended a, a National Trade Association conference in person before the pandemic, uh, the Council on State Administrators for Vocational Rehabilitation. And when I was looking at the, the structure and looking at the bylaws, they had a standing committee uh, within CSABR on deaf, hard of hearing, and deafblind services. So that was there. And there was discussion at that time about kind of changing things up and doing more to create a network. And so obviously the question that we had is, well, so if we do a deaf professional network, uh, will we receive support from CSABR? And they, the, the answer was yes, you will, 100%. So we put together a position paper and we submitted it to the leadership, staff leadership, as well as the executive committee for CSABR to see if we can get their official endorsement. And the mission that we came up with, and I'll read this to you, our mission is to provide vocational rehabilitation professionals serving deaf, deafblind, hard of hearing, late deaf and adults, and youth with best practices to obtain quality outcomes in competitive and integrated employment. That's our mission. So in the position paper that we submitted in January, 2021, we talked about the structure that we would have quarterly Zoom calls with state coordinators for the deaf. We felt as though we needed to have a room, a place where they could go to talk to us about what are their challenges within their respective states, what's working well within their respective states. And so we felt that that was important. So we wanted to keep it inclusive to state coordinators for the deaf. CSADR agreed to that and agreed to pay for the cost of interpreters. Uh, so we've had that, uh, as well as the administrative support, you know, someone to take the notes to the minutes of these quarterly calls. So from then to now, I believe we have had four quarterly calls with the state coordinator for the deaf. The other piece of the position paper was that we wanted to have this summit on an annual basis, whether it's every year or every other year, but open it up to include uh, rehabilitation counselors for the deaf and some of our community partners throughout the country, NAD, ADERA, et cetera. And so uh, this is the actual first summit that we have done. So we're excited about it, uh, over the top excited. So when we came together, the first order of business was really to attend to the model state plan for the deaf. And the reason why I brought, brought this up is that in the first standing committee that has since gone away, uh, there was lots of discussions about we need to get that done. The last time the model state plan for, for the deaf um, had been attended to was in 2008. That's a long time ago. And the advancement and the, the, the changes in terms of service delivery, uh, the use of technology, the advancement of technology, it just made sense that that needed to be our number one priority. So we had all these working drafts and uh, best laid plans is that we were gonna just do a deep dive and try to make it happen. But you know, we're multitasking with Darius, myself, Kathy, we have a lot of other things going on in our life. So we just couldn't make any kind of significant progress. So we set our priorities and we located funding to be able to hire a contractor, someone that could work with us, the Deaf Professional Network and the Standing Committee, that is, to move to, to completion the model state plan for the deaf. And so that was critical for us to be able to find the money to make that happen.